Hello everyone, my name is Karazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in this world on this very fine spring day, and I just took a look outside and I was blown away by all of the color we're seeing now around Lupine Ridge. Look at all of these flowering fruit trees. And I love the extra touch where, in their last couple days of flowering, they start dropping all their petals, just like this. Just one more neat touch in the game that I wouldn't have expected, but it is really cool that it's there. In the last episode, we put together this tannery, and I am still happy with how it came out. I like the sort of front area with all the reds and pale colors, contrasted with the back area with the andesite and nice cool color of the walnut, capped off with some plaster. And inside, I am currently Oh, well, I guess I was waiting for this tannin to finish, but now that it's done, I can actually move all of these over and continue the process. And we did all the prep work so that we could get to renovating our starter house and make it a smarter house. No, just an in-law suite or guest suite or guest cabin. Something fun. Because we had our tanning operation in here previously. Before we get to that, though, I do want to take a moment and talk about a couple things. There are two items we need to cover before we get to today's build. One is that if you have been paying attention, you may know that Vintage Story version 1.17.0 is right around the corner. And as of this video, the release candidate 2 came out, I think, yesterday, like 18 hours ago. And we will be updating to version 1.17 when it fully releases, but not until then. Not until it is no longer a release candidate. In addition, we may need to wait for a couple of our mods to catch up. There are a couple that have added blocks into the game. Uh, I think currently we're only using the workbench extended, but I would like to get into the extra chests soon, and we will need to have those mods updated if they need to be. But once that happens, we will update, and we'll be able to experience all of the fun things that come along with the new version. And I am just seeing this for the first time. I am liking how these trees are doing their job of just giving us a glimpse of the foundry over here, but not really the full thing. And then we come to the entrance, bam, there's our bright orange bauxite lining our foundry and the giant chunky building in all its glory. In progress. Whoops. Anyway, as item number one and a half, I guess, maybe there were three things to talk about, is in the last episode I spent a lot of time doing chores in the middle of the game. That was due to a special request to sort of see what life was like in Vintage Story in the mid to late game. The reality is that took a lot of extra time to record and I had about an extra hour of video to sift through and add into the final video, which made it extra long. So I think today we're not going to do that, unfortunately. But I will go ahead and refuel these furnaces while we're here, because it is convenient to do so. Second thing that we need to cover, or in this case the third, I guess, since I added the extra one, is that we have to put someone in jail, and for that, we're gonna need a jail cell. So let's go ahead and we are going to, yeah, we'll knock a hole right here. go and then once they make sure they can't dig their way out I'm going to replace these dirt blocks with some cobblestone ignore the fact that you can dig this with your hands okay there we go nice little alcove for a jail cell and we'll give them some light we're not we're not that cruel right we're not cruel no not us there we go a little bit of light and Let's put a few things in the cell. Here we go. We'll give you a bed. 
We'll give you a bucket to do your business in. There you go. And you know what? We'll even give you a meal. There you go. Have a meal. Don't say I never did any favors. Now, before we put our prisoner in, we need some bars. And I think I know where we can snatch some from. Yes. Yes, these will do nicely. Thank you for your service. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and drop some bars in here. Work out pretty well, actually. And then we're going to go ahead and just chuck you in there and lock you in. Aha! You can do no further evil now. And then, just so we know who is imprisoned here, let's see, let's put a sign somewhere. Let's put it right here. In fact, this cell belongs to T. J knows what they did. Do not feed. There you go, TJ. You've got your very own jail cell. You know what you did. Ah, I'm just kidding. We'll check on TJ in a little while, make sure they're doing okay. The reality is that uh, I mistook them for being a third time offender with the 20 questions and said they were going to jail and they offered to actually go to jail, so there they are. Anyway, we need to get started on this. This little house has served us well in the past. Not so much recently. I think I only use it for pumpkin storage and the occasional trip down here to do a little bit of panning. While it looks great for starter house, it's looking a little drab now. I think we can dress this up and maybe brighten it up a little bit and turn this into some place that our in-laws or other guests would like to stay. Of course, the biggest question is, I'm alone here on this hill. Who the heck am I married to? A drifter? I think the first step in getting started here will be to start cleaning up the place. We need to get rid of most of this fuel and these fire pits and these trunks and this armor stand with our old armor on it. And let's just sort of clear the place out and give ourselves sort of a fresh blank slate to work with, or at least blanker than it currently is. Let's get to it. And since it's a calm night, we will hang out here until that condition changes. And I'm going to put down a project bin and fill it with the things I think we'll need. At least some of them. So I'm thinking we're going to want some oak. And this time we're going to go for the wood, not the logs. Same with this birch. I'm thinking I might want some aged wood for real this time. I'm thinking. And I know we're going to need some granite stone bricks, and some granite rock. And I brought over a brand new, or almost brand new, steel chisel. I did spend some time between episodes rebuilding our stash of tools, and I made all of them out of steel, since we only have, you know, two iron bars left. So the plan here, I think, is I want to do a checkerboard pattern in the floor, alternating the oak and the birch. I may decide to replace the birch with larch, but we'll see. I will probably shake up these flowers a bit, maybe put some different colors in here. And I'm going to keep this area pretty much as it is. Except for, I would like to do some trim around the windows, and that is true for the entire house. I'm not going to worry about the basement as storage for food so much, so I'm not going to bother with making sure that we have a stone ceiling. In fact, it might be nice to have that checkerboard floor showing. And this room, I think, will just sort of turn into bulk storage. I may just put some barrels and some crates and chests down here with some cobwebs. I'll probably 
pull up this part of the floor and replace it all with some cobblestone, just so it's consistent. And then I want to do something special right here, and you'll see what that is. So we're going to have to start by tearing out this floor, and I'm going to go ahead and get that done right now. place sure seems weird with no floor. And something I didn't think about when we first built this place, but since we're not going to care so much about the cellar as far as food goes, I think we can go ahead and bring this pillar down so that it actually is, you know, somewhat more realistic structural support. Oh, and hey, our trees are starting to fruit. So in about 20 days, I have some red apples and... I guess a little bit longer for yellow apples. And then even longer for pink apples. I like that they're staggered like that. That's kind of interesting. These are too young to actually have fruit. Well, let's get our oak out. Let's get our birch out. We'll start with one stack of each. That might get us the whole way. And I brought along our ailing iron saw. And I brought our backup meteoric iron saw. So let's get to some Zuba Zuba. What I might do is I might start by putting out a subfloor temporarily so that we can actually place some of these vertically. There we go. I goofed. I'll bet you didn't know that subfloor goes beneath your floor, did you? Let's start again. So, oak, 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 oak. And birch, 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 birch. Not like that. There we go. I think that is just a nicer floor to look at and to walk on. Now, something I just thought of is that we have this cooking area here, so I think maybe in the kitchen area here, we might want to actually dig these back up and put down some maybe stone bricks. Yeah, maybe even widen that a little bit. More of an apron. Close. Close. I think it needs to be a different color. I like the andesite that we mixed with the granite over at the tannery, so maybe that might work better here. Let's see how this looks. Hmm. Closer. Closer. You know what? Let's take up these three. And let's put some polished granite in there. Yes, I think that looks better. And that just sort of helps it add a pop of color while still blending in. Now, as for this area over here, I have something else in mind. We need the chisel for this one. So we're going to go ahead and do a bit of this. And then a bit of this. That should do. And then let's add some granite bricks. There we go. And then this and add these bricks in. There we go. Now we have a little shoe area or mud area. Not quite a whole mud room because, you know, the whole house is one room. But there are a couple other things I think should go here. Let's get them. Let's go ahead and we're going to add you in here. And let's go ahead and just do this. There we go, and then we'll make a little platform. Maybe we'll put another one right here too. There we go, and the reason for that is 
in 1.16 and later, it is possible to store your shoes on the ground. So this is a little shoe storage area. That makes me really happy. However, I'm wearing these shoes, so we'll have to go find some more shoes. If I can press the right button here. And I'll update this later. And then the second thing that I want to do is I have a little bit of bamboo. This represents about a third of my bamboo. And I want to add it to this block right here. And then... And now we even have a little welcome mat for wiping your shoes off before you store them. I like it. I think it's cute. Now the next thing I want to do is, do you see how we have these granite cobblestone window sills here? What I want to do is, kind of like on our main house, I want to bring that sill inside. So we're going to chisel all of these blocks, and we're going to add some granite cobblestone to them. And then we're going to chisel them, just like we did on our main house. Oop. And we'll do that the whole way around here. And there we go, it's looking better already. Now the next thing I want to do is, I want to add a wood frame here. I don't feel the need to frame the outside like we did on the main house because we have shutters here. And we also have light mud brick, which is kind of like more structurally sound than plaster. You know, it doesn't chip as badly as plaster would. So I don't think we're going to do any frame around the outside. I just want to do like these first three blocks here. And by three I mean one, two, three, like that. and fill these in with some kind of wood. I don't know if it'll be walnut. I kind of brought along a couple options. I have the birch and some oak and some larch. I think the larch might be good to bring some lightness into this build because it's still kind of dark. It's still a little bit drab. So why not? Let's just go ahead and try with the larch. You know, I don't hate it. Let's put a few more in and see whether it fits or not. Hmm. Now, see, I like the color like this. If I could frame it right here. I like the color. I don't like that it kind of clashes with the light mud brick. I do think we need something a bit darker than the mud brick, specifically. I don't think we need to go the whole way to walnut. That would look too much like the main house anyway. So, let's try oak instead. Yeah, I like that more already. It's not as light as I'd like it to be, but it does look better. So, I'm going to go ahead and frame all of these in the door. Maybe even put in a different threshold here, like, I don't know, a piece of polished granite rock, maybe? And then, we'll see what we have to work with then. I think we'll be about ready for furniture at that point. And here we go. We are well on our way to looking good. And I saw that out here I do see something I want to change, which is these. I would like to just smooth this out a little bit more. Let's see how that looks. That's a lot better. I could almost take it back one more, and you know what? Maybe I will. Let's try it. Yes, that's even better. Just a bit less chunky. So, now that you have this in, I'm looking over here and I'm thinking that maybe I do want to replace these oak slabs. Because, since I couldn't get the larch to work out for these windows to bring some lighter colors in, I think maybe if we put some birch up here, and I'm going to use birch rather than larch because the birch here 
would match better with birch up here rather than having larch. But that way we could have at least a lighter color above us, if not below and in front of us. So I want to give that a shot, and to that end we're going to need to cut up some more of these logs. Let's just do them all, there we go. And bring down these oak slabs. So let's get to it. I do have one question. Why do slabs take so much longer to chop than the full blocks? They're half as much wood. That feels a bit better. If we can't have lighter colors on the floor or walls, then having them above just sort of gives it that sort of more of an open feeling, a little bit of sky to it almost if the sky were, you know, tan. Okay, our next order of business is, I think I want to put some beds up here so that our in-laws or guests can stay and sleep the night. And I think I want to, I think I want to put the beds either here or here with the heads either there and there or here and here. I think what we need to do first is Let's go ahead and chisel these shingle stair blocks that are the inside of our roof. The reason we put this here is that back in early versions of 1.16, the, the shingle roof blocks did not count as solid blocks on their interior faces. And we put these here to try to stop snow from getting in and to keep the heat in, and they worked somewhat, I guess. It isn't as necessary now, but these do still help keep the inside roof line from being too blocky. But I think we can go ahead and chisel these back like this so that each block is just one quarter of its normal size. And that will give us a bit more headroom here. And yes, we get basically one half more block on each side that will just feel so much roomier, even though it really isn't. It's just a, an optical illusion, but hey, you know what? I'll take it. And like that, we have what really feels like a lot more space, even though it isn't. And I might do the same thing for the outside, just to sort of help get rid of some of the chonk that is apparent on the roof line there. But we will get to that when we start working on the exterior of this design here. I think for these windows, I'm not going to frame them as much. I think what I'll do, though, is I am going to slightly chisel these so that they are just a little bit framed on the inside here, like this. Just some definition. Yes, I like it. Simple, but effective. Okay, so for the beds, I want to give our in-laws some decently comfortable beds, so we're going to go with the linen beds, sorry, wooden beds, and you know what? I wonder if, oh, we can't put them here because there's a roof there, right. Okay, so at best, we could, oh. I mean, I'll take it. I will absolutely take it. That's... That's doable. That is very doable. In fact, I might just scoot this guy over here. And that way we could have room for like a nightstand and then a trunk right here. So here we go. Let's try putting... Mm, no, not that. Let's maybe put the nightstand there and the trunk there. Then we can put a bunch of candles on the nightstand, like that. There we go, I like it. And then maybe we'll put some kind of planter up here then, just to sort of give it a little bit of greenery. So yeah, let's go ahead and we're going to start cluttering the place up. We're going to put some furniture, we're going to put some decorations, and maybe even break up the space. Not with chests that were here before, but maybe with like a counter for the kitchen 
and a couple other odds and ends. So, let's see what kind of trouble we can get into. Okay, so, starting with some clutter. Let's go ahead and I think I want to segment out this area here as sort of the kitchen. Let's do it like this, and then we'll put a shelf here and a shelf there. And then we'll just put a couple of these crocks here. Maybe we'll put one on the table here. Not like that. Center, there we go. And then one last one here. There we go. And then let's grab one more table because we're going to want to have a little breakfast table. Let's put it... We'll put it here, because we don't want to put the chairs too close to our trapdoor, because we don't want whoever's sitting here to scoot their chair back and fall down and break their neck and die. So, I mean, that'd be bad. Let's put our chairs like that, and then over here, put another table. Ooh, even better. We'll put one here, and we'll put a third one here chairs there and there. And right here, we will put our very valuable Amok tabletop so that our guests can enjoy their stay by challenging each other to an intellectual duel. Pardon me while I wax poetic. Now, for some of the clutter, I think I want to go and see what some of our local merchants have available. So we're going to go and do that real quick been a while since I saw you. How are you doing, Adachi? Do you have... Oh, you do have some stuff for me. Okay. Well, let's grab a few storage vessels and flower pots. Probably the cheaper ones. Thank you. And hello, Kino. Do you... You don't have any boots. You have no shoes. Came all this way. How dare you? Okay, so we couldn't buy any boots, but I know we can we can make some of these. Yeah, there we go. Got some high leather boots. And are there any shoes we can craft? Oh, those are cute. Let's make some. Oh no, pink cloth. What do you need for that? Oh, we got cranberries. Okay. Okay, and we just need, what, four of these. So we need... 16 liters of dye. That means 16 cranberries. I think we can do that. We have cranberries galore right here. Don't eat them. No, stop eating them. And you know what? Just to replenish our stash, let's go ahead and we will drop these alum chunks in here. Now, note that in the next version of the game, I have seen in the patch notes that it will cost less alum and other mordants to make your dyes, and they're made differently. So that's cool, but we aren't there yet, so we're going to just do it the old-fashioned way. Okay, so we only want 16 liters. I think 16 crushed alum in there. There we go. We can then... 16 cranberries in, and we have pink dye. Okay, let's go get some cloth, and let's toss half of these in here. Ah, right. Requires eight hours of sealing. Okay, that's fine. That is fine. There is plenty of other clutter that we can put in the house while those dyes soak in. So we can start by placing our boots. Uh, I'll go wherever we put them. Okay, that's cool. Let's put them there. Yes, I like it. Okay. Now, this table here is going to need a pot. So let's put it at an angle like that. And what should we put in you? You are a blue pot. So you get a yellow flower. And on, let's do here, let's put another pot. We'll put an amber pot. 
at a 45 degree angle and you are red. Ooh, yes, I like that for a splash of bright white. Let's do that. And then I think we'll put a storage pot there. We'll leave this maybe open. Maybe we'll put down do we put a trunk down here for some storage? Maybe like the grandkids come and they want to store their toys in this trunk. Or maybe this is where we keep the spare blankets. Spare blankets. Okay, so we're going to have a bowl here and a bowl there. A table. Then, let's see, I think we need something else in here. Right here. Right here. We'll put, in fact, maybe more like here, we'll put a, a little potted tree. Maybe this is some kind of lemon or lime tree that we keep indoors for a bit of flavor to add to our food. And then up here, we did want to add another planter here and put maybe a fern in it. I like the fern? Yeah, I like the fern in there. We can do that. And I feel like I want something else here, but I'm not sure what. But also, this is pretty cramped, so maybe we'll just leave this alone. At least for now. And I think I want something else right here. Yeah, let's do another table. And we will put another flower on it. Let's do... You know what? I want a black flower pot this time. Oh, I'm starving. I lied. I had a celadon pot. Didn't realize I had it. I'll put you straight on. Why not? And uh, that's kind of weird. Let's grab. You know what? Let's just put you there instead. This feels more like a little home to me. Oh, and of course, I know it goes up here. Let's try putting you there. Here we go. Just don't knock it over. It's going to shatter if it falls. Okay. I think I am pretty happy with this floor. Actually, very happy with it. So let's start on the downstairs then. I have a couple I Oh, right, the dirt. I have a couple ideas for down here. After we get this dirt out of the way. And be very careful because... This shovel will blow right through these mud bricks. Okay, the first thing I want to do is I would like to pull up this cobblestone. And I want to put down granite rock instead. Kind of as if this is like a cement floor. I like that it is textureless, at least compared to the bricks. So we're going to just bring these up and drop in these stones. I have exactly enough. Okay, well, that works out. And then, what I do want to do... What is... Inside of you? Ooh, nothing. Okay, that's perfect, actually. That is perfect. And this room, I want to turn into a clutter storage room with some cobwebs and some chests and stuff. And then this one, I want to turn into a more practical storage room, along with something special right here. And clutter, 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 and maybe a table here, more clutter, clutter here, clutter there, and some more clutter, cobweb, cobwebs, cobwebs, cobwebs everywhere, cobweb, cobweb, clutter, 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 there we go, that fits nicely. Now, this wall here, I'm going to knock this out. There we go. And we're going to replace you with some cobblestone. Like so. And then, I'm thinking we'll do some cobble bricks like this. And then, one bucket of water. Like so. And then, 
a chisel job. And I have discovered that in the next version of the game, while there were originally some issues around getting chisel blocks to correctly stop water from blowing through, I believe that issue may have been resolved. So we should be safe in creating a little well right here, or a wellspring, like so. And there we go. And if this floods next time we're down here, well, we'll know who to blame. And I nearly forgot. We have a couple more pieces of clutter for here. Let's do clutter. And clutter. There we go. Now I think it's high time that we pay a bit of attention to the exterior here. I want to do something here. And I also want to dress up some of these exterior bits here. So first, I want to go ahead and we're going to chisel all of these in order to sort of help this divide here look a little better. I want to just sort of sink these in by half a block. So they will look like that. And I'll come in with some more mud brick here, or maybe even like some granite brick just to give it a bit of foundation. Or could do, no, not like that. Don't like it. We'll just do this. There we go. That should help sort of give this some definition and have the light mud brick stand out from the dark mud brick. And I'm just going to go ahead and replace these dirt blocks with more dark mud brick. And then, as I threatened, I do want to thin out these roof pieces here a bit, and then do a similar bevel on the window, as we did on the inside. And the same on this side. Looking good. Now, for this outside area, I was thinking of having a little place for people to sit and chat and look out over the valley below. And I think I'll do that by putting down some chairs, say, do here and then like here maybe even move this one down just one more like that and then we'll do like a little thing not sure what to call it but we'll just do a bit of this and that maybe even behind here little bit. Here we go, and maybe even a couple more of these at the end. Just like that. And then we'll come in here with some bushes. And we'll just kind of fill these up a little bit. There we go. Now we're talking. And then, as a little centerpiece, I'm going to clear some space right here. And we're just going to plant a few lupins, the colorful ones. And let's clear the grass here so it looks a little more manicured. And we're going to lose these bushes. I think we'll make a little spur off of the road here. And maybe these flowers could use some decoration around them. I've got an idea. Maybe some little limestones around them, just to sort of have little pavers almost. I don't know. Does that set them apart? I think it does. I think I like it. 
And I don't want to flank this path with more gravel because that might make the path a bit too broad. This is supposed to be like a an offshoot that was dug just to sort of bring you over to this cozy little area. Now, I do realize this is a bit of a safety bungle right here. So let's just move you. Is there a spot? Yeah, there we go. One forward. And we're going to get a few more pieces of fence, like so. And we are just going to... Do that. There we go. Now we won't accidentally fall off the cliff. And we can hang out here and watch the kids and not worry about them having to dive bomb off of here. And then that leaves this area for something. I think I might just put another tree down or, or, and hear me out, could do a little water feature. There we go, an awkward little pond. And then we fill you with this stuff. Boop. Then we play with this stuff. That's always fun. And then we just drop a few of you here and there. And then a couple of you. And then we replace you, your pink apple. There we go. And replace, replace you out here while we're at it. There we go. And while we're here, I think this area right here is just begging for a nice big redwood tree. And I say that because that direction is south, so the sun is always going to be coming from roughly this direction. So it's not going to be an issue for our crops if we have a nice big tree here. And I think it will go nicely here and help to bring some shade to this part of the homestead. So I think right about here in the middle. Right there. And a last few odds and ends. We're going to put a little log pile here for fueling our cooking fires. Or rather our in-laws and guests cooking fires. And then down here I do want to bring in some more practical storage that they might use, like some shelves there, and maybe a storage vessel there, and we could do maybe a trunk about there. What do you think? You'll do the trunk there, and maybe another storage vessel next to it. There we go. Cozy. A little tight, but I like it. Oh, and you know what? We can even leave our bucket here. You can always make more of these. So there's a bucket of water for fetching water from the spring. And I was about done with cleanup and going to start wrapping up the episode. But I remembered that we, somewhere in here, have some pink cloth or some boots. And I put together some, well, one pelt. We're going to need four more of these guys. And here we go. We got some fur-lined reindeer herder shoes. They are very pretty and pink. How do we look with them on? Oh, gorgeous. They go so well with our outfit. <laughs> our hunter's outfit. Anyway, oh, you know what? I think we need to fix that tree. That's a really ugly little tree. One tiny tree down, and hopefully a nice big tree will take place. So let's go ahead and we're gonna drop our little pink shoes in here. Let's put them there. There we go. I think that just brings it together. And so there we have it. Our guest suite slash in-law suite is complete. And apparently we have drifters in the basement. Yep, thanks to you. That'll be fun. But we didn't touch the vineyard, and I think I like it as it is, so I'm going to leave it. And in fact, I may harvest it here soon. 
but we made some improvements to the exterior, the around the windows there and the roof line, and this little sitting picnic area where we can hang out with our friends and chat and look at the flowers. And then inside we have the new brighter interior. I like this very much. I think this just looks so good now. I wouldn't mind staying here myself. We added the oak trim around these windows and the granite cobblestone sills. We did the bevel on the interior of these windows as well. And we did the floor and the floor up here as well in the loft. We made a nice little cozy place for our guests to sleep and keep their clothing. And a jar they can break. And then downstairs we made a little well created a storage area, and then added some basement clutter where all the junk is kept. That includes spiderwebs galore. So I'm going to call this another renovation success. Oh, and I love this entrance area. This just, with the rush mat and the mud area and the shoe shelves, that just makes me too happy. Anyway, everyone, that is about all we have time for in this episode of the Vintage Story Guide. I hope you enjoyed the renovation of our starter home into the guest house. We've been hanging around the estate a while, so I think it might be time to get our adventuring boots on and go for a bit of an explorer and maybe do some resource gathering here soon. If you have any questions that you'd like answered AMA style in a video, leave them in a comment with the hashtag 20 questions. And if you play video games, and would like to support the channel, consider using my partner link next time you're shopping on the Humble Store, on screen now, and in the description below. Anyway, as always, my name has been Corazar, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.